So I very recently visited the Queensland Air Museum down here on the Sunshine Coast in Queensland and I thought I'd share some of the highlights from my quick visit there. I was just kind of going in just to scope out and see what's changed because it's been a couple of years since I visited and um, I was actually lucky enough that I was actually able to get inside a couple of the planes they had on display. I wasn't expecting it. Oh, there's my face there. Um, I wasn't expecting it because it was a Monday, it wasn't school holidays, and I wasn't expecting much to be open. But quite a bit of it was actually open. For those of you who don't know, the Queensland Air Museum is actually the largest collection of aircraft in Australia currently, and it is a collection that is constantly growing, and uh, they often tend to collect a lot of the so-called rejects that other museums have chosen not to take on, so they often have a lot of stuff that is kind of mid-restoration, which is really interesting for me to see because they have a lot of things out in the workshops and out in the yards which are only kind of partially built, and you can see the active work that they're doing on it. But what I did manage to do was film a couple of clips of me inside two particular aircraft, one of which was a Lockheed PV-1 Ventura, and the other one was a Mark 20 Canberra. Now I do plan in the future to do some long-term visits to the museum and actually work on some content around some specific aircraft, but today was more of a scouting mission, and so the footage you're about to see was just shot on my phone, the audio quality isn't great, and I didn't come with a pre-prepared script, so I'm basically just rambling, but I, I wasn't expecting to get inside two planes today, so I just thought I'd quickly snap a couple of clips for you guys to see what is in store for the future, and I hope you enjoy. And here we are in the cockpit of the Ventura on a hot, humid day in Australia, so sorry if the camera is uh, steaming up a bit, but it's bloody cramped, I'll tell you that much. But uh, They've got all most of the controls intact in here, they've even got the uh, Bendix radio finder installed there, central control panel, far control panel. Can't get in the nose right now, but it's there. Of course you've got your uh, throttle control system here, then we got some of the uh, auxiliary and hydraulics down there, looking back behind me, you can see down the fuselage, and uh, yeah it's bloody hot, it's really hot in here, but uh, yeah this is pretty cool, so uh, you know, it's a bit old though, <laughs> but uh, it's in one piece, so um, yeah, not, not often I actually get to sit in a plane that I'm talking about, and um, so I'm not very do good at doing like stuff like not on a script, so I apologise that this is a bit, a bit random. Here we got the uh, navigator radio station. Another Bendix radio unit here. And here we are in the turret, which is incredibly cramped. Uh, that's technically the gun sight. And if you look over that, you can see the, the barrel of the guns. Glass is a little bit on the dusty side, but uh, it is so cramped. But I fit just. So uh, this is what it looks like to sit in a turret. Or stand in a turret, I should say. But uh, the reflector sight's still here and the uh, control panel sitting here as well. I'll put a photo up of that on the screen. And um, you actually get a really good view. You get a really good view. And here we are in the cockpit of the Canberra, and it's very familiar because I've flown it in a couple of flight sims, but uh, it looks a lot nicer in the flesh. So you've just got the one pilot seat here, obviously. Uh, navigator is behind with all their relevant equipment and stuff. You can actually see some of the radio equipment down there. And here's the uh, the navigator station, which is uh, actually, it looks more cramped than the cockpit, but it's actually less cramped than the cockpit. And 
they don't have much to see out of. They've got that port window there. They've got the uh, <laughs> the sunroof there, basically. And there's another one here. But aside from that, they don't have much. So yeah, that's what I got to see today. Um, again, apologies for the poor camera work there, but uh, in the future I plan to come back and cover some very specific aircraft there. Some of the old World War II stuff that they have, and they also have quite a few Cold War era aircraft. You saw the Mirage in one of the earlier photos. They've got a couple of Gloucester Meteors in there as well. They got a de Havilland Vampire, and they've also got a Sabre that served in the Australian Air Force as well. So I do plan to cover all of those and hopefully get to sit in quite a few cockpits as well. And I plan to get some footage of their big kind of open engine days as well, where they start up some of the planes and all of that. So hopefully I get some good footage of that. It all depends on how busy it is and where I can uh, sneak in with the old camera. So I think on those particular days, I'll be getting up very early and staying there very late. But uh, if you have any particular requests on, you know, any one of the aircraft they have there to try and cover, I can try and make arrangements and uh, work in a particular order. But yes, a bit of an impromptu video today, wasn't sort of planning on adding the, this to my schedule, but hey, here we go. And regular content shall resume soon.